everyone. Um, looks like I got everything right here. Everything started right. So, Guy, good to have you. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to this. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So, first of all, let me just kind of welcome everyone. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. Um, I'm going to go over kind of the, the rules for all the, uh, the, the first timers. Um, so basically, uh, in the bottom right hand corner, there's a little chat area. Um, you can go ahead and as Guy and I are conversing and, and answering other questions and talking about stuff, feel free to go ahead and enter your questions in there. It'll go ahead and load up and he and I will just uh, answer them as they pop up. So um, first of all, again, Guy, thank you for joining us. And uh, where, where, where in the world are you now? So I am in the UK. I'm in um, not far from a town called York, so um, in the north of England. You're so, going to have to help us out. We're bad with, with, well, with geography uh, <laughs> outside of California. <laughs> it's about it's it's about three hours north of London, so it's kind of uh, fairly north of England. Uh, York is like a beautiful kind of historic town, so kind of in the countryside, but um, it's it's a nice it's a nice place to live. It's good. Nice. Uh, right, 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 not, a, not a bad place to be right now. You know, you yeah. probably have lots of lots of room for activities. <laughs> yeah, like it's, it's pretty. Good. It's been pretty good during this lockdown. It's felt, you know, we've got plenty of space to go and, you know, run, cycle, and all, you know, all the fun activities. So it's been pretty good. But I, I definitely would prefer some uh, some LA weather. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. As I, say, I, I, I hate to tell you, I'm I'm in San Diego, and it is beautiful right now. Oh, There's maybe all of 78 degrees. Really, and sun is out, not a cloud in the sky. So. <laughs> when we're done, I'm going to hop on a motorcycle and go for a ride. So <laughs> great. So yeah. So um, so yeah. So let me start with with the uh, I guess the obvious question. You know, how how did you get to where you are? You know, I mean, you've won Le Mans. You know, um, you won the ALMS series. Um, I mean, so you know, great list, huge accomplishments. But how did how did you arrive at being Guy Smith? Well, it's, it's such a long journey because I'm, I'm getting I'm getting I'm getting a bit old now, so it's quite a long journey. Oh. But you know, I guess um, I guess probably like like most drivers, you know, we all we all start generally start with kart racing. So my dad um, used to do a lot of rally driving, so he was always kind of into motorsport, and you know, around the house would be working on his car and what have you. So I was always kind of fascinated by by engines and cars and stuff. And um, my dad got me a go kart when I was probably six years old, seven years old. And I used to sit on his knee. He did the pedals, and I did the steering. And um, as I got, as I kind of got older, I got, I got. Um, you couldn't actually race till you were ten years old at that, that point in the UK. So on my tenth birthday, I got actually got a race a racing go kart. And uh, late and, start. Yeah, it, actually quite late. <laughs> well, I guess these days, I mean, the kids. I no, it, it, it's it's crazy. Yeah, no, I know. But to think at ten years old, I mean, I think about what I was doing. Ten years old, and I was definitely playing with like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> so when I think of like, you're like, oh, I, I had to wait till ten, yeah. you know, to do, yeah. yeah, it's like it's like saying I had to wait till ten till I had to start shaving, you know, exactly. You have a razor till then. Well, I went to the go kart track yesterday actually to watch my nephew was racing, and you know, the, the kids are so young now; they're like six, seven years old. In this, with their massive like, helmets, have you noticed yes. how they haven't really made a kid helmet? They just put more exactly. padding in. So exactly. These heads. These just racing heads. It's great, <laughs> but but it's so cool to see them doing it. And, and um, yeah. so yes, yeah, so that's really how I started. I, I did my first go kart race. I think I came last, um, but realized that actually, you know, really enjoyed it and um, started to kind of just take it a little bit more seriously, really, and yeah. and, and doing and start to have a little bit more success. And um, you know, you kind of work your way through. And um, before long, you know, I was starting to win you know, British Championship races and events and became the junior British champion. Um, and then I started to race in the world stage. So um, I was second in the world championships in go-karts. Um, and that point, you know, started to realize that I wasn't particularly great at school. I wasn't very academic. Um, but my school were always very supportive of me going racing. I think they thought it was good cool. life experience and what have you. So, um, so yeah, so did the karting. And then um, I won a scholarship to move into car racing. Um, so the, my first year of car racing was, was, was kind of paid for. Um, so I raced what, in. what was actually after karting? What was the first series you hopped into? Well, actually, to be honest with you, I did quite a lot. So my my manager at the time, um, he believed that what you should do is race in all the different junior formerly where where it's quite cheap to race and get experience. Right. He felt I should do lots of different different series before I got to the the kind of bigger cars. Um, of course, today that's that's a different strategy because today it's kind of you rush through and you've got to be in Formula One by the time you're. 18 or 19. Right. So I actually raced in, in a, a initially in, a, in a, um, a car called a Formula First, which is um, yep. 
it's kind of like yeah kind of like a like a like a slower formula ford um, right and then i did i did the formula ford british formula ford championship uh super competitive really, series really competitive like the formula yeah. ford festival all, all those kind of races which is really really great racing and, and learned a lot um and then i did formula renault um i became the british formula renault champion um in 1995 um, and as a test for that, I got to test the Williams, um, Damon Hill's Williams Formula One car, which was, you know, an awesome experience because yeah. all I ever did was like a Formula Renault with about 200 brake horsepower and then right. jumping into a Formula One car was, 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 was huge. So a lot, a lot of fun, but it gave me, it gave me a real kind of insight as to, you know, what I wanted to do. I definitely wanted to, you know, race at the highest level and be a professional driver. Um, but at the time I was 21. So it, it would, you would think that 21 then was very, very young. So Damon Hill was probably in his early 30s. But for me being 21, it was kind of like, wasn't really kind of heard of to make that jump to Formula One. Um, and I mean, obviously that's changed since with, you know, with people like Jensen going in at much younger. Obviously we've seen it now with Verstappen and Lando. Um, but um, so I did the did the, the test with Williams, which was great. Um, and then I moved into Formula Three the following year uh, with Juan, Pam, uh, Juan Pablo Montoya as my teammate. So we were, um, in, a, in the same team together at Fortec. Um, and I, I actually won my first two races of, of the year. So I, I qualified on pole for both races and women both and thought this is going to be easy, you know, you know, just straight in and, and, and win the races. And, um, and it, it didn't quite turn out that way. Um, I think uh, one, one won two races too. And, um, we had, you know, we had some engine problems and stuff and one thing or another. But uh, I think we finished fifth and sixth in the championship. Um, then I moved to Indy Lights. I made the move to America. So I came over to America. Um, I was fascinated by um, Indy car racing and, and, and Indy Lights was really kind of, you know, quite big at the time. It had Christian Damata, Helio Catanevas, um, who else? Tony Canard. So I, I came big over to... Big names. Laguna. Yeah, it was great. So I came over to Laguna Seca and was walking around the paddock and um, I actually met up with Stephanie Hansen, um, probably because he was a European and maybe I felt like we had, you know, something in yeah. common. And, and got chatting with him and um, ended up doing a deal to, to race together in, in, uh, in Indy Lights for 98, um, which, which, I, which I came over and did and loved it. Um, ended up finishing third in the championship in Indy Lights and it came quite close to winning it, um, but um, had, a, had a crash on the last race, dropped down to Who third. Who won it that uh, year? Do you remember? Uh, actually, DeMatta won it. DeMatta, DeMatta yeah. won. So, so I, I actually, I had a couple of wins and I actually got quite close to him in the championship because he was in his second year with Tasman. And um, I was obviously with Stefan's team and I got quite close to him in the championship and it was sort of kind of going into the last, the last race and I had a DNF and I think he won mm -hmm. it and probably quite rightly because he was probably more prepared for IndyCar than, than I would be at that point anyway. <laughs> so at the end of that year, I ended up taking over Damascus seat at, at Tasman and uh, Scott Dixon took over my seat at uh, Johansson's. And um, what happened there was starting the season all was good and um yeah just basically we didn't really gel we we the, the team was was I just moved to indycar with tony it was the, their first year in indycar with, with tony yeah. and, I. and kind of all the all the kind of people went up to the indycar team and the indy lights team was kind of unfortunately a bit of a shell of what it was previously and i think yeah. we ended up finishing i don't know third or fourth in the championship but it wasn't it wasn't a great year and um, I remember at the end of that year thinking, you know, what am I going to do? You know, am I going to, is that, is that, is a dream over? Is my career over? Right. And right. Um, I ended up speaking again with Stefan Johansson. He said, look, you know, I'm going to do um, a, a sports car team. I'm going to race at Le Mans next year and I'm going to race in the American Le Mans series. Is it something you'd be interested in doing? And quite honestly, you know, I'd, I'd never even really thought about Le Mans. I just thought Le Mans or sports car racing is something that kind of old farts do and people that, you know, are kind of, you know, <laughs> Come out of F1. You're like, you're like, is that, you're like, that's where I'm meant to go to die. Like yeah, exactly. after my well, car career. I, re I really had no kind of, no kind yeah. of desire to do it. Um, but then the more I thought about it, I, we actually did a test at um, Road America and yeah. um, we had a um, uh, um, Reynard um, Judd V10. And I remember driving the car and like the engine just screaming. It was, it was just absolutely awesome. And I just fell in love with it. And I thought this is really, really cool. And, of course, to get to drive with somebody like Stephanie Hansen, you know, who's kind of a, it was a hero of mine from, from yeah. Form One. Um, you know, your learning curve just just takes off because yeah. you, know, you understand how they talk about the car and how they debrief and and, and also how they drive. And um, yeah, I just found it really really good. I did my first um, my first test, um, my first sorry, my first Le Mans 
and I got rookie of the year, which is the fastest of all the newcomers to Le Mans. Um, although we didn't finish the race because the car was a little bit unreliable. Um, but it gave me a taste of Le Mans. I realized that, that that's what I, that's really what I wanted to do. I felt that I, I belonged there and, and it was really, you know, just, just an absolute, you know, awesome, awesome place. Um, luckily for me, the team manager was a guy called John Wickham, um, who, unbeknown to me, had been approached by Bentley. Bentley were, were planning a return to Le Mans and had approached John to kind of spearhead the team and be team manager. And they were looking for a young, handsome Brit. I couldn't find one, so they, they gave me a call. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they, they they had had Martin Brundle, they had um, uh, Stefan Ortelli, who'd previously won them on with Porsche. Um, yeah. They had Andy Wallace, Butch Leitzinger, and um, I think they had Eric Vanderpol. And then yeah. um, they basically gave me a tryout. I, I was invited along to the test um, and um, went to the test, had an interview with them. And funnily enough, about three weeks later, sorry, three weeks earlier, um, in the US, I'd lost a bet with my mechanics. I, I can't remember what we were talking about. We had some bet, and I bleached my hair blonde. I'd lost the bet. My my, my hair was completely peroxide blonde. So of course, I turned up at this Bentley kind of interview, and I got completely looking like Eminem. Yeah, yeah, looking like Eminem <laughs> or like Billy Idol or whatever. So it was horrendous. But they sort of said to me, "Look, you know," he said, "You know, you've got the drive, but you've got to lose the hair." I was like, "Fine by me. Done. No, 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 problem, no problem. Done. Exactly." So. um so and that was that. So then I, I joined I joined Bentley and um and, and that was kind of like the, the first kind of start of, of it all really for me. And um, you know, um, you know, it was a three year program with Bentley. The first year, you know, we showed a lot of promise, but the car really wasn't quite an endurance car. Um right. in, in year two we we raced that same car and, and I actually that year I was the test driver because we only ran one car. And then in year three, we had a brand new car. And of course, that, that's when we won. So yeah. and that, that was kind of the start of the journey for me, really. Um, you know, once you make that step and you become a sort of professional driver with a manufacturer, you know, and then obviously getting the success of Le Mans, it really kind of sets up you for the rest of your career. Um, and then I've been able to bluff it ever, ever since and keep, you know, keep, <laughs> keep, keep, keep going. You did so. a tremendous job, <laughs> I, I got to tell yeah. you. I, I've, been, yeah. I've been really lucky, Paris. You know, I've been lucky because I've been obviously with Bentley with, with that program. And then I joined, actually, I was with Audi in 2004. We finished second at Le Mans with Johnny Herbert. Right. We, came, we came close to winning. And then I, 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 but I had this real kind of connection with America, you know, from my time in Indy Lights. I really loved the circuits. I loved yeah. the way that you, you guys go racing. You know, the, the racing is super competitive, really, really aggressive, but much quite, quite a friendly environment. And, and I really right. like it because we don't get that in Europe. And, um, so, so it was fun. So, so I decided that um, I wanted to look at the American Le Mans series because it was kind of outside of Le Mans. That's where you needed to be if you were going to go sports yeah. car racing. And uh, and I, I, I met up with Dyson Racing, which again, arguably one of the the best um, you yeah. know, top sports car teams in America. And uh, you know, I was with, with those guys for sort of eight eight years before joining Bentley again, back with the GT program. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been looking. It's, at it's been a fun journey. You know what I mean? It's been fun. Yeah, yeah. it's been fun. Yeah. No, I, you know, I mean, and it's 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 amazing because it's like you know when you made that shift to go from you know from open wheel to even considering you know closed cockpit, you know prototypes things like that. Um, the, just the the I mean, you you know what it takes. I mean, it's crazy to get a factory ride, you know, and to have such a, a great factory effort. I mean, especially with prototypes, you know, I mean, it is one. There's only so many manufacturers that are willing to spend that kind of money. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and then otherwise you're usually with like a privateer team and it's not that, but I mean, you know, I, I, it just, it puts you in the history books, you know, I mean, the speed eight, what you did with Bentley, I mean, that's, that's a big deal. I mean, especially, you know, the funny thing is when I think of, you know, you know, what we know of Bentley today are these very, you know, big, comfortable cars that are just have an abundance of stuff, right? Which which translates to weight, right? You know, yeah. wood and leather and sound deadening and glass. And so it doesn't make for the best race car, but ironically, you know, the Bentley boys, you know, the famous story, I mean, they were all about racing. You know, I mean, what, you know, the, I'm, the I'm irony partying. is that- I'm partying, they like to party as well. Yeah, 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 well, yeah, 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 that, exactly, yeah. Um, <laughs> it kind of goes hand in hand. Yes. I mean, look, racing yeah. nowadays is a lot more sterile from what it used to be, you know, you know, so well, it's, uh, it's, we, we always, we, we always try to do the Bentley boys proud. We, we always did it, you know, within reason, we always tried to make sure we did, when we went racing, we did it in the right way, like, and the Bentley boys would be proud. So, yeah, uh, but you're right. You're, you're right. I mean, Bentley has, 
has got that image um, of, of being, you know, obviously it's a luxury GT car. So, yeah. um, but it's amazing what they can do. And if you look at Le Mans, you know, their history, you know, their history is all about endurance racing. You know, the, right. the Bentley boys, Bernardo, uh, Burke and all those guys. I mean, that's where their history is. And I think when Bentley kind of um, separated, um, you know, from, from um, you know, became part of the VAG group and separated yeah. from Rolls Royce, they had to step out of the shadows and they had to, you know, put their own ad- identification on themselves and say, this is, what, right. this is what we're all about. And, you know, what better way to go back to Le Mans and try and win it again, you know? Right. And, do that. And, 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 you know, when you actually think about it, it's kind of crazy because to be able to actually do it, you know, because Bentley's only a small company compared to places like, you know, people like Audi and, and Toyota and these companies. It's just right. tiny, really. So, um, they, so they yeah. also have a much more recent sports car DNA. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you at least have people within the group that like are trying to make things go fast, you know, but you yeah. look at, you're right. When, when VAG bought uh, Bentley, I mean, you know, they'd made like a, actually they hadn't even made the Brooklyn's in. It was like the Azure was like the, you know, yeah. like, you know, they're like, well, it doesn't have a roof, you know, so that makes it a little bit lighter and, you know, but I mean, yeah. just these big, you know, land yachts, which I mean, yeah, which is great, but again, you wouldn't tie it back in, but I, I think they did a great job because I think when I look at it as a, as a car fan, is someone who looks at you know and he looks at each brand as to like who it speaks to as a person you know they instantly uh picked up a younger demographic you know what i mean by by doing that by going racing and and putting the effort they did into into creating what we now know as you know the continental gt yeah. um which has really become a very like nimble and agile car um but still retains all the all the luxury that one would expect but i mean they did a great job of instantly capturing a, a, a younger demographic, which is really what, what everyone was kind of going for. Because, you know, if you capture someone, you know, we'll just, let's just say in their thirties, you know, um, and they're successful, if you do a good job, you know, you've got that customer for so long, you yeah. know, um, versus, you know, capturing them very late in life. And, uh, yeah. and, and the, nature good, take a Bentley, the good thing about a Bentley as well, whenever I'm driving one around, if I'm ever I'm driving one around, people look at you, they don't kind of look at you in a kind of, Oh, you know, look at that idiot, you know, you know, in that car or whatever. They they, right. they have respect for it. And it's it kind yeah. of it doesn't it's not too outrageous, but people are quite respectful of it. Right. And um yeah, I think I think, you know, I think it's it's the brand has really kind of I think the launch of the GT in, in two thousand four, all the way through to now, the, the the stuff that's coming out and obviously with the Bentega and, and what have you and the, the new flying spare, the the kind of this you know, it's, it's kind of some cool stuff coming out and Oh yeah. Trying to maintain your heritage and, and you, you kind of what you know what you're all about, but also right. trying to be relevant to what the market is currently. So, well, it's funny because it's like you know when I think of you know obviously when I think of the Speed Eight, I, I still think it's one of the best looking cars ever. Yeah, like ever. I mean, we, I've I've uh, I've had the pleasure of being in the presence of one a couple yeah. times because every now and then they'll pull it out of the vault, you know. Yeah. And I, I, I guess there's and you know, they really didn't build many of those things. I think they um, built. I think there was there was about yeah, particularly the new car. I think there was maybe only three or four Paris. I think um, one of them was crashed. Uh, right. One, one of them has been sold, and there's the winning car and the second place car still still around. Right. And, and, and it's right every, every time we go to Goodwood, they they roll it out, and I usually get the up yeah. the, the good fortune to drive up the hill, and they're like, I oh, know, be careful, it's five million, and then the next year, be careful, it's eight million, and be careful. Yeah. It's five million. I'm like, God, I don't want to drive this thing. It's <laughs> right. Right. But it, it's kind of like what's happened with the McLaren F1. It's kind of that same thing. But I mean, yeah. uh, especially when you think about what it's worth to Bentley, I mean, it's priceless. Yeah. Like it really is priceless, you know. Um, yeah. But, um, but yeah, no, I, I just, you know, when I think about it, because I remember one of those cars coming up for sale and it was a huge deal. Like the fact to be able to privately own one was a big deal. Um, but it's funny, you know, when you look at the car in, in, you know, because it's a prototype and obviously it has a Bentley livery on it, but you don't instantly correlate it, you know, with, with Bentley. Um, but you can see some of the styling cues. But yeah. you sit there and you go, okay, that's a that's a proper car. And I remember when you guys introduced the the Continental GT GT3 car, you know, and I just was like, what? You because know, that that is a a. I mean, you it looks like the car, you know, obviously yeah. some aero bits, big wing, and all that. And um, I remember I remember being with Tom O'Gara um, when they when they showed it. And this is actually when Tom had just started getting into racing, you know, so here are dealer principles going racing. And, and obviously we were thinking about, oh, wow. Okay. So this is because at the time we were racing with Lamborghini, 
Um, and I know he was thinking, oh, great, another brand that we get to kind of funnel our motorsport efforts and, and messaging through. And I remember us both looking at it, just, you know, because again, what you know of the car, you know, you know it, and I remember just Tom being like, well, it'll be one hell of a car to try and pass, you know, because it's just like, you know, one and a half, you know, cars in terms of size. You know, you look at like just the average race car would probably you you wouldn't even, you know, it, the roof comes right up to where the window starts. Yeah. Um, and then you see the damn thing race and it looks so nimble. It changes direction. First of all, driver comfort must have been amazing. I mean, I, yeah. I've never driven it, but I've sat in it and I was like, this is amazing. Like yes. for any claustrophobic driver, that was, I mean, you had a whole living room next to you. <laughs> I think you, you guys had like a bathroom in there, right? In the middle of the race, it, you guys had it's, it seats. It is. It's, I mean, I, cause I, I, when I did the jump from sort of prototype racing to, to GT racing, you know, I, I kind of sat in this thing and I'm like, I'm like gonna put my arm out and I, I couldn't even touch to the side of the car. And, I'm, right. and you, sit, you sit quite low. So I'm like, this is like really weird, but you're absolutely yeah. right. Cause when you, when you, when you look at the car from the, from the exterior, it does look like a big car. I mean, it, it, it's no no getting away from the fact it's a big car. Right. Uh, but actually, yeah, when you're driving it, it feels just, you know, once you take off down the pit lane, it feels like a real a real race car. And it's yeah. nimble. And actually, you know, the, the weight of the car, I think, is 1,300 uh, kilograms. So yeah. it's, it's it's probably more than half the weight of the, of the road car, which is amazing, really. Um, yeah. But, you know, you've got the wood, the leather, the electrics, you know, everything that makes a Bentley a Bentley, all the comfortable right. stuff. They take out and they leave, you know, they leave, they leave the bare minimum in. But, you know, it's got some little Bentley, like the, the paddles are Bentley paddles. The, the door trim is the same. The, the you know, to, to open the doors. There's a few small things, but really, really you know, not, not a lot. But, but the engine, you know, the engine is the same. Uh, yeah. the, the chassis, you know, fundamentally is the same. Uh, all the panels are obviously changed to carbon fiber. But, you know, yeah. it's great that Bentley, you're able to go out there and race against Ferrari, Lamborghini, Audi, right. you know, because... It's like, and really, Bent is the only true GT car racing because they're really sports cars. So, 100%. And, and you're right. When you, the good thing about the size is in, 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 in GT racing, the car's got presence. So when, yeah. when that's all over you, you know, and you're a little, you're a little McLaren, it's got right. some presence. So, and your mirrors are just filled with that grill. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's, it's got to be pretty cool, you know. But, but that's the good thing about that type of series, you know, the, the GT yeah. racing is you get to see all these different brands racing and, and yeah. you know, whether you're, whether you're a Bentley fan or a Ferrari fan or a McLaren fan, it's great to watch all the different brands and, you know, one week of Bentley win, the next week of Ferrari will win. Yeah. Um, but that's what makes it cool. You know, that's what, that's what it's all about. And I think from Bentley's point of view, you know, obviously the prototype stuff was, 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 was really great. You know, was, was Le Mans was, 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 yeah. was brilliant. But if you want to kind of say, well, what's relevant to what we sell, you know, as you as you said, you look at the hundred percent. You know, you know, like you say, you look at that car. You know, it's a Bentley. You know, there's no yeah. no, no mistake, and it's a Bentley. And um, that's why, from a from a from a boardroom point of view, you know, it's this is race race what race what we sell, and uh, people right. can relate to that. So, yeah, and, and and again, great success with that car as well. I mean, much like the Speed Eight. I mean, that 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 Conti GT GT3 did did really well and continues yeah. to do well. Yeah. So yeah. No, it's been, it's been good because I mean I think if, if you know the three sort of three eras that Bentley have raced sort of back in the sort of you know twenties thirties with the with the original yeah. Bentley boys and then the return to Le Mans with the with the Speed Eight to have things mm. there and then to come back with the with the GT car and have some some success there as well. Yeah. It's really it's nice to have that. So it's nice to be a small part of it as well. Um, yeah. And and hopefully that will continue uh, you know for you know long 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 ahead. Absolutely. You know, yeah. All right, so I'm going to do my job now. Um, is is a, all the questions are kind of stacking up over here? Um, so okay, actually, yeah. So so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna ask some some fun some fun car questions here. So, um, what is a car that you've always wanted to drive on the road? What's something you've wanted to slip behind the wheel of? Road car. A Ferrari Dino. Really? <laughs> yeah. And Mate, I've got to admit, I'm shocked by that. I thought there'd be something, uh, you know. Well, the reason I say that is because, because actually, um, a long, long time ago, my dad, my dad, my dad bought one. Like he saved up. He'd, he'd always, he'd always loved this car, and he'd seen it and driven past it, and eventually bought one. And and but he, unfortunately, he sold it before I was able to drive. And I always loved yeah. the car. I always would love to. No, no, the, the car is stunning, uh, especially a, stunning a flares color. and tears one. Is yeah. Just, 
I mean, I mean, it's definitely a bit retro. You know, I, I quite like my old cars. I'm quite, I quite like my my retro stuff. And I'm I'm so fortunate, you know, to drive sort of cool modern cars. Um, yeah. That I can't actually appreciate the old cars. I, I, I'm quite a history buff, so I, I quite enjoy. It could be old. I thought you were going to say like 250 GTO, an original GT40. <laughs> I mean, you're like a proper Brit. You like don't want to. You're like I want to keep it a small motor. <laughs> like, well, I've got, I've got a. I've you got a, about parking uh, it in London or. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know. I've got a Ford Escort um, BDA rally car, so I do that. Oh well, you just answered the other question here, which yeah. was, uh, so, you know, what's your daily driver? Well, the the the, the Escort is um is, is just a rally car, so it's yeah. I don't know. It's probably my age. It's forty odd years old. And it's one of those cars that you, you drive it and it feels like kind of like you're quite agriculture, like driving a tractor. And then you set off down the, fo you set off down the forest and the thing comes alive. Um, yeah. I've, also, I've also got a 1966 Lotus Cortina. For, um, oh, yeah, wow. Which, which, I, which, I, which I've just started racing for, for fun. And, yeah. you know, you have to really drive the car. You know, you're here. Oh, yeah. Her, you know, properly. And it's so engaging to get back in a car that you have to yeah. drive. And the tires on it are great. So it's sliding around and it's yeah. just... I probably have more fun driving that than I do driving, you know, proper, proper race car, if you like. No, so, no, I, I know, um, I, I, I agree. Um, yeah, I, uh, yeah. My, my first job in the car business, in the retail car business, uh, was for a guy named Tom Price, who's a big vintage car racer. And I was 18 at the time. And, you know, he made some comment about like, you know, look, you don't know anything about cars until you've driven like the old stuff. Like we're yeah. seeing where it all came from. And um, and I, I, I he, put, he put me behind the wheel of some pretty crazy stuff, like a short wheelbase Cal Spider, um, yeah. you know, things like that. And you really start to appreciate the drivers of yesteryear, you know, and what it took. But you yeah. also see the, the fun in it, like you said, you know. Um, Great fun. It, it's, it's a lot like, you know, which um, these questions are going to come up as well in, in, our, in our conversation here. But like, you know, it's the same thing like when you look at Formula One now, you know, you, you sit there and. You can sit there and kind of argue that that uh, that the drivers have it easy, um, mm -hmm. but you start looking at all the switches and all the things that they're having to do, and it just it's it's not that it's a dis different discipline, but there, it just it's a it's a kind of a, a different a different job. You know, you're kind of like really strapped into a rocket. With, it's just different, isn't it? Yeah, you know. But, I mean, how many times I don't when whenever I go to Europe, <clears throat> for some reason in Europe, all the rental cars are manual gearbox. I don't know why. Yeah. All, so. And you never drive a manual normally. So you go to Europe and you get your rental car and you drive it yeah. around for a couple of days. And it might be <clears throat> something quite low powered or whatever, right. quite basic. But you end up driving it around and you're doing the gears and you end up yeah. having so much fun thinking, Chris, I, I, actually, I actually want to buy one of these things when I get home because I'm having so no. much fun. In reality, I'm... in reality, you're always going to go automatic because it's easy. But actually, right. just it's just engaging. And, and, and actually, yeah. that's what you love love doing so you, you know what though i mean you you and the thing is you're you're seeing it also like in car values like i, I mean i don't know how it is there but like here uh, just a regular you know 80s 90s air-cooled porsche you know yeah. it's a manual transmission again not big displacements you have to be a turbo yeah. it's going for crazy money you yeah. know and it's not like it's a I mean, they built tens of thousands of them but it's that it's that driver engagement yeah, you know yeah. everything now. It's you just you know it's hard to even get out of second gear. It's just, bah, bah, you know. Yeah, just, yeah. Cars are just I think, too good now. Cars are too good. I think also from a race point of view, you said about Formula One. I think um, if you were to go back, if you were to put, I mean, at the end of the day, don't get me wrong, Formula One is incredibly difficult, and the drivers are all brilliant drivers. Right. So it, nothing would really change, but you know, it'd be great to put Lewis in a um, like a. You know, one of the like maybe one of the Senna McLarens or something. Right, and right. He, he would, you know, he'd be, he'd still be awesome in it. But I think he'd love driving it because, yeah, you know, there's so much going on. It's so pure. Um, I think now everything is 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 is, is super fine, super to the limit. But um, I just think those the, those cars are, are so good. And unfortunately, you know, d um, with development and the way things move on, you know, you, you get we get further and further away from it. I remember the first time I went to Le Mans. You know, it was a um, it was a um, sequential gearbox. Sequential, I was gonna say, yeah. At the time, I thought sequential is amazing. You know, the fact that you don't have to do a H, and you can do a sequential. Right. Like, wow. And then you go to paddles, and you're like, wow, this is like, why, why do you ever want a sequential? You know, when you when you've got right. there, you don't have to take your hand off the wheel to change gear. It's all there. It's like, wow. Yeah. But um, but then sometimes, you know, sometimes the most fun cars and the most difficult cars to drive are, the, are they're actually the most basic ones because they haven't right. got all the power steering and they haven't got right the control. but actually you know you can make mistakes but but actually that's what's fun about it you know so right. 
Uh, and, and that's, and that's and I agree with you. I think with the modern cars, especially we were talking about how competitive sports car racing is now. Um, you can't really muscle the cars about. Like you don't want really want a whole lot of you know overseeing. No. The stuff that looks cool actually really is detrimental, you know, to your yeah. lap time. And that's that's where you know you look back in the day of, of you know the drivers of yesteryear that we talk about, and you look at how much they were really physical with the yeah. car, and you you can't do that anymore. Um, it doesn't. I much prefer I much prefer watching the IndyCar than Formula One because with IndyCar, you know, it's physical. The cars oh, are moving around. No power steering. No power know, steering. And, is, and I think that it just it just I think Formula One is just becoming more and more. You know, they don't, they don't sound that good. They don't look that good. Right. You know, it, it's kind of just become a little bit kind of numbed down, really. And I think it, it's, um, a, it's a bit sterile. It's it's, it's very sterile, yeah. it's it's almost become too much aerospace now. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So you know. Yeah. Okay, I'm doing a horrible job. These questions right. are just like stacking up. We're, the, the good news is like we covered like two or three of them while we were talking. Um, okay, all right, same question. Oh, by the way, about the Dino, when you come over to the US, I will totally get you behind the wheel of one. Okay. I, I have awesome. a bunch of friends that have them. The problem is, you know what the first thing you're going to realize? That you're too tall for it. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, yeah. So we'll, we'll shoehorn you in there and you can learn that that was okay. a horrible choice. Right. Um, uh, <laughs> what's a car that you've always wanted to drive on the track? Track car. Um, oh, that's a really good question. Um, that is a really and, and good I, question. Feel free to answer more than one, because I, I, you know, <laughs> want to hear it all. Well, it's it's, it's actually really there's, 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 I've got one which is a really again a really underwhelming answer, <laughs> but but it, it's a, it's a genuine answer. So I've, well, I've got two. So I, don't, I always like driving like a nine a nine five six Porsche because of Lamar. Yeah. And else. I'd love to. No, I'd, love totally. to go, I'd love to step back in time, like we just talked about, and drive yeah. something of, of of that iconic period. You know, yeah. my heroes are people like Derek Bell. So to drive what they've driven and experience what they've experienced, right? It, yeah. maybe I can then compare to that and say, well, actually, yeah. You know, you guys are legends. You know, it, I, I, I get it. Um, it but, like solidifies uh, everything you thought about them. You know, yeah. based I mean, on, on the equipment they had to drive. Yeah, I mean, I know that I know the heroes, and I know how hard those cars must be to drive with the turbo and the boost and the lag and all the stuff. But yeah, uh, you know, at the time they were state of the art. They were the latest and the greatest. So it's all relative, isn't it? And I'm sure if, you know, like the, the prototype that I'm driving now is you know again that much quicker than the prototype I, I did Le Mans with. So things move on. But so so the Porsche would be cool. And then growing up, um, I. When I talked about my dad, my dad um, used to help a, uh, a, a racing driver called Dave Scott, who raced in like British Formula Three, and mm -hmm. he was test driver for Lotus Formula One team, and he raced against people like um, uh, Martin Brundle, uh, Senna, um, Tommy Byrne, all these kind of guys. Yeah. And I used to go along and watch these races, and they raced in Formula Three, and they used to have this like Rolts RT, I think it was a thirty-five, and um, I just love the car because it, when I was when I was a kid, seeing these these Formula Three cars going around, I just thought they just were, were awesome, and I still think they're a great looking car. So actually, now I'd really love to buy one and actually go and drive it or race it. You know, you know, do some. That's stuff awesome. You totally should. Yeah, just because it like it, it, just because as a kid, it's it was my kind of iconic yeah. car because we didn't really go to Formula One races or go, we didn't really go and watch Formula One. We watched these Formula Three races. So yeah. yeah, so it's kind of a bit of a low key one, but it would be quite a fun thing just to experience it and drive it. So, yeah. No, I know. I, I, well, look, at least you have a good, that was a good answer I, as to and why. I got to, drive the, I got to drive the Williams, which was 95, which was still yeah. slick. So again, in terms of F1 cars, you know, I mean. You, know, you kind of drove the greatest. I mean, 95, because it had, it had I don't say just the right amount of technology, but it almost did, right? You know, it was yeah. just modern enough, but yeah. still had a ton of mechanical grip. Um, oh, and also, I mean, that was the car then. You know what I mean? You know that. Era. So that was they, had, pretty... they had Villeneuve and Villeneuve's first year in F1, so he yep. went that, that year. And so yeah, it was you know pretty 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 cool. I mean, obviously, and, and yeah. was that the car that Damon won in? Was yeah. that the? Yeah. yeah. So I mean, yeah. that was the car. Yeah. So you know, it was so. definitely definitely cool. So I'm you know, yeah. quite lucky to have driven that. So yeah cool yeah all right more questions there okay uh favorite racing livery okay so that could be off any car any series any era just what's one that just has always kind of caught your fancy yeah um i mean there's been some great ones there's also been some horrendous ones haven't there um yeah there have 
I mean, look, you, you always got your iconic ones. I mean, again, with sports car racing, I'm sure other guests have said the same thing. I mean, obviously, the golf cars are fantastic. Yeah. Today. They're, they're, a, a golf livery on most cars looks awesome, whatever, yeah. whatever you do with it. And the Rothmans, Porsches look great. Um, you know, I, I always, you know, I love the Marlboro cars, you know, whether it be the Marlboro Penske's, I, I love those when I came over to, totally. to race. They always look great. Especially Typical. when you see them live, because yeah. the red is a different red it than what translates yeah. to TV or photography. It's, it's it, a it, bit it, more fluorescent. I, I, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I quite like the 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 Camel Lotus one, the yellow one. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, the yellow know, and it, blue. Yeah, I mean, and the gold one looks great. The JPS one looks great. It's, it's yeah. a real classic one. But, you know, I, the, I think the, the yellow one was quite kind of quite out there and quite yeah. different, you know? Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to think there's, there's been some cool ones really. I mean, you know, across the years, I mean, yeah. Um, I don't know. I think that's about it really. I mean, it, it just more about the brands, isn't it? There's some, you know, some right. iconic brands that have been, been involved. And it's kind of, it's kind of sad actually how there's, there's, there isn't that presence. I mean, I, I understand why, but, um, you know, again, like we talked about, almost like the same thing with the sterilization of the cars, you know, becoming a little too clinical. Too many brands. So, so the sponsors, you know what I mean? You don't have yeah. that kind of, you know, playboyish kind of, you know, yeah. Yeah. big, I mean, big mega brands. I mean, the target cars were always good. I mean, always, yeah. you, know, identify, you know, you could always identify the team or the car, you know, by, by, right. by, by the sponsor. And also, when you've had, you know, when sponsors or brands have been in the sport a long time, they... They kind of create that brand, and I think that the, it becomes identity. You know, you identify with it. Um, right. You know, I hate it now where the change in every every race you have a different sponsor. You know, it's right. Nice. You, you, you kind of can't keep. But it's but it's because of the, it's because of the business. It's because you don't have the again. You don't have the big have sponsor the that can sign up and be a title sponsor. So you're having to. I mean, it's it's the business having to adapt. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. So. Um, okay. Uh, Favorite all-time car movie, and 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 take that with I don't say like a grain of salt, but it's it's you know because we don't mean car movie like it has to be Fast and the Furious. Like we actually internally at the company we were discussing our favorite car movies, and like you know you could even say something like a movie like Drive, you know, which you know there's cars in it, but you wouldn't call yeah. it like a car movie. But it just you know hell batman is a car movie to me yeah okay you know the batmobile being so iconic what's a what's a, a car movie that you enjoy oh i'm just trying to think is this where you tell me that you don't watch movies <laughs> no i watch lots of movies i don't watch a lot of car movies um you probably realize i'm not, I'm not actually a massive car fan and i don't mean that in a bad way it's not that I you can tell me taxi driver is a car movie i mean we know <laughs> <laughs> um i mean I wouldn't say I've really got one. I mean, obviously, again, it's a bit cliche, but obviously the Le Mans film is quite, quite a cool film. It's yeah, actually, no, that, it's actually a really yeah. bad film, but actually, for me, um, it's but for the time, that was pretty cool. They were strapping well, those big cameras well, on those cars. Yeah, I mean, the, the way it's done, it's just for me, it's just kind of like it almost, almost means more now having done the race to go back and watch it. It's like, oh yeah, it's right. kind of cool. And and, yeah. I, and and I'm lucky enough to know Derek quite well, Derek Bell. Yeah. You know, we've, we've had a lot of conversations about the making of the film and stuff that's gone on behind the scenes, and this was happening. So when I watch the film, I'm kind of like, oh yeah, you know, he said about this scene, or he said about yeah. that. Scene. So it's actually really quite cool to to, um, to 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 watch it, and obviously all the stories about it, Steve McQueen. I mean, what what an absolute hero. Um, but you know, the film was a kind of a disaster, really, in in many yeah. ways. But oh um, yeah. You know, but, well, it's, why but, he had, but, it's, it's why he had to self-fund it. You know what I mean? Nobody, yeah. nobody understood. Like they were like, really, nobody's gonna turn up and watch this. Yeah, I mean, when, yeah. I don't know how long it is. You watch it until they actually speak, but it's like you know, like half an hour or something. And you think, right. well, what, what is this? But um, yeah, so I, that probably, probably that I would say. I would yeah. say yeah. yeah, works. That's an answer. Okay, um, scrolling through here. Let's see here. Um, if you could race in any car, which essentially means any series, uh, in any era, what would it be? That's a really good one. Hmm. Do you know, I'd love to have done, I'd love to have done like IMSA back in the day, you know, oh. back, back, you know, like, 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 you talking about um, the GTP cars? River, I've, I've watched loads of the videos of like Riverside, you know, yeah, like, Riverside, that's, 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 like, Riverside Raceway. Cause obviously again, Having driven for for Dyson and Rob Dyson again, you know, 
we always talk about racing. And he, he's talking about when he was racing. So yeah, you know, you find, you find yourself on YouTube and you're going back and you're like, you know, like 1985 Riverside, da, 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 and you go on. And it's like Derek Bell, Al Hobart, you know, all these right. kind of cool drivers. You think, wow, they, you know, they looked really great racing. And and yeah. you know, when I've been racing, it's been great. But that was really kind of a golden era for, for sports car racing. Right, uh, right, yeah. And, and I kind of look at that and think, yeah, that would have been that would have been. I'd love to have been a, a part of that, you know, yeah. and, and all the dry, all the drivers. I mean, Derek still says that for him, that's his favorite time racing in, in, in America. Really? A bit, a bit like cool. myself. Well, he had that kind of that vibe of it's the racing's super competitive, but you know, everybody's super friendly, you know, yeah. the, the paddock's great. There's that paddock vibe. Yeah. 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 yeah that's paddock, a huge part and, of it. And we miss it, you know, we miss it desperately here in Europe. So, um, and to be part of that with all those great cars out there would be, yeah. that would be really cool. Um, yeah. Okay, What's so what, what car would you have driven then? Um, oh, probably, probably, a, probably a nine sixty two, just because th- th- that was yeah. the kind of that was that was the one, you know, that was the car that was doing all the win. I mean, obviously, there's things like um, with um, uh, was it Jeff Jeff Brabham, was he in the to- was it Toyota? Was it Toyota? He was yeah, there. yeah, and that thing like like just that thing was awesome. Just yeah, just, just awesome. So you know, th- those things were just brutes. I mean, yeah. you know, safety was what it was but the cars were just, <laughs> i mean they were just i mean they were rocket ships um jackie you know. stewart wouldn't have approved of the same no no he wouldn't no he wouldn't no he wouldn't no. but i mean no. the, you, know, you look back at you know I, I would have been happy to be racing in formula three you know against my you know what we talked about with, with the formula three car that would have been a great time um yeah. i mean there's so many great you know so many great eras of racing i, mean, I think you go much back before the 80s things were you know those cars were pretty dangerous. I mean, yeah. You know, I, I, yeah, I look back. But those, those Can Am cars, those Can Am yeah. cars were the business. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, I, mean, I mean, they're wicked, but I, I don't think I'd want to be. Uh, I don't think I want to be driving one or crashing in one. I think it'd be great. <laughs> they're much better to watch than to be be a part of. Um, right. So yeah. Well, you know, the, the question wasn't what car era series did you want to race in and live. You know. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. The questions are just filling up now so here actually this is actually a great question and um i have not seen the car in person because i uh it's it kind of sad you know as a result of everything that's going on geneva was canceled um yeah. so there's a, you know i i usually get very excited for you know that time of year every year to, to get to see um some of these really cool cars in person have you seen and I, i'm going to probably botch the name uh the because I, I didn't get to hear a proper british person announce it at the stage um Bacalar, the, the the really cool Bentley kind of. You know, they're only doing a few of them. Yeah, the, the, I I haven't seen it. The, the yeah, they're yeah. kind of the, the whole funky yeah new one. I haven't seen it actually. No, uh, but it, but it looks cool. And um, I mean, I, one would assume they're going to build it. I mean, Bentley's kind no, of. No, they, they are. They they are. They, I think they, they sold out. I can't remember how many. Oh, really? I, mean, I want to say eleven cars, but okay. again, I'm I'm purely just quoting from from little snippets that I think I've heard. Um, I could have totally pulled that number out of thin air. Yeah. Um, but I know it's, I know it's mega low. Like I, I do remember that. I remember it being a number that was really low that I was like, oh wow, that's, that is going to be something yeah. special. What, yeah. um, what do you feel? There's a kind of another part to that question that the client asked. Um, you know, what do you think of Bentley's direction with, with stuff like that? Cause they, they really haven't, I mean, that's a, it's a proper, you know, seven figure car, yeah. you know, it was a, it's a bold statement, but, um, you know, I think if they do the sh- if if they do the small numbers um, and do something that's that's kind of a little bit different, then yeah. you know, it does. You, you know, there's there's, a, there's always going to be a market. There's always going to be people that want to want to buy it. And you know, yeah. you, you know, if you're a small volume manufacturer, why not do something a little bit you know a bit a bit different, yeah. a bit out? And you know, you could you could say that Bentley, you know, is conservative, is safe, which is maybe true. But you know, by mm-hmm. doing these. Kind of, these kind of bespoke projects, it's good to do something a little bit outside the box and, and yeah. almost showcase what they can do. Um, right, so right. I think it's really good. I think it's it's good that they do yeah. that, um, trying different yeah. things. I mean, most of the cars that are in that price range are trying to emulate a race car. You know, they're trying to be yeah. really extreme. And I thought that was actually kind of cool to have something that's in that segment, you know, because there's a lot of cars in that segment and yeah. uh, now especially. Um, but they're all very much trying to be kind of like a race car, sports car. Yeah. I, I thought that was actually kind of cool that um, Bentley kind of put their flag in the ground and said, well, no, we're going to make one of these, uh, you know, I can't even what? call it a hyper car, but we're going to make, well, we're going to make one of these Uber, you know, uh, you know, car, ultra limited rare cars. 
but we're going to make it comfortable as hell. We're going to make it yep. a showstopper. I mean, it's a proper Monaco car. And actually, yeah. if you if, if you buy a race car to drive on the road, it's not a lot of fun, is it? You know, no, unless you're going to use it as a track day car, you know, then you get to the point where you just look at it and it's great. But you, right. want, to to, you, know, you want to be able to enjoy it. So if you can drive something that's kind of like sensible. Well, you, you know, get your money's worth because you can get behind the wheel more and you Absolutely. can use it. So, yeah, I, I think the car looks really good. And they, yeah. again, they, I think they even showed it in yellow, which is a like bold, okay. you yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, they, they, very, they, very they, cool. Yeah, they get quite bold with some of the colors, which is which is kind of cool. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. So more questions here. Um, man, there's a bunch. I, I, uh, so let's see here. We'll go with um, you know they they asked what uh, somebody asked what was the, uh, the the greatest F1 driver of all time. I'm gonna mm -hmm. have you uh, I'm gonna have you answer that, but I'm also gonna ask you because um, you did race up against some some really you know who really great drivers um so i want you to answer who who you think was the best f1 driver but um who also you really enjoyed racing up against yeah uh another good question i mean oh, it's really hard to say isn't it because you have obviously different areas personal so. opinion by the way because yeah, yeah. because i've asked this question it always yeah. comes up it's always yeah. a and it's never really actually a generic answer like you always think it's gonna be schumacher senna whatever and even if it is there's a there's a reason there's a reason for it you know i mean we yeah. all know that like you know again if we're just going to go by numbers right it's supposed to be michael right you yeah. know po possibly lewis on the way yeah. to being lewis but you know much like a lot of your answers there's a lot of nostalgia behind it mm -hmm. um and so yeah don't don't feel like you've got to answer i mean I, yeah i mean look you could you could pull something out of left field and say eddie irvine you know what i mean yeah. um it could be and you could be just because you like the way that he partied you know yeah well that's true he was probably the best guy to be high on cocaine driving a formula one car <laughs> well he's, he's definitely made a lot of money he's done he's done well it's de yeah, definitely he has done well god yeah, i hope eddie doesn't ever watch this yeah <laughs> um let's think well yeah so, again it's i mean growing up obviously I was a kind of a, of the center generation, so Schumacher right. hadn't really started his winning. So kind of, you know, everyone was kind of, you know, center, center, center. And I still believe, you know, you know, absolute, you know, just one of the greats. I, it's difficult to say the greatest because I think there's a, the, they kind of come under a, a kind of a, a, a bunch of, of, of greats. Um, I Let's mean, just go with your favorite then. I'm going to um, tweak it. Let's say greatest. Uh, oh, greatest right. in your, in your opinion, who you, you know, it could be who you look up to, but or who just... Who, who you really like seeing behind the wheel. I mean, it's kind of like, yeah, think of it like almost like favorite actor, right? Some yeah. great actors, but they're just certain people that kind of speak to you or touch you in a certain way and the way they do characters. And it could be just somebody's driving style that you really, you I, really I, I, I loved. I love Senna. I love the way that he drove. I love the way he had, he had the bravado, the way that he drove. Yeah. Now, as a, as a championship winning driver, I mean, obviously he won a lot of championships. He could have been probably more successful if he'd maybe driven in a different style. Right. You know, Alan, Alan Prost, you know, he, a lot a lot of people overlook Alan Prost because you know he was kind of boring as a driver. A professor. A professor. But, you know, I spoke to Stephanie Hansen uh, a few weeks back, and we, we, you know, who was his teammate. And he said, um, yeah. the guy was amazing. He said he ran his car like he was the CEO of a company. You know, he right. was the CEO, and everybody that worked for him, including Ron Dennis, you know, they all had a role. And, yeah. you know, that in itself is a, is a, is a skill and an art form. And, and yeah. uh, you know, so... I think you know. I think he he would be you know definitely right up there. Um, probably ultimately on numbers, Lewis Lewis should should ultimately end up being probably the greatest on, uh, on numbers. I, I, yeah, I, I think I think he will. Um, and 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 I think that um, it's hard to say he's the greatest because he's, he's still active and he's still current. But probably Lewis will be that will end up being the the number yeah. one. Um, and you've got to respect that because I mean you know yes he's in the best car, but then Michael was in the best car. Maybe Ayrton probably was one of the guys that actually wasn't always in the best car. You know, he, he fought yeah. not always in the best car and didn't have that that <clears throat> car dominance. Yeah. Those. Well, you know, the thing with Michael and with Lewis that I think you know is, is um, and I can't speak for Lewis's situation because it, it, there's not. I, I wouldn't say that there's enough public knowledge about it. But like we, you know, Michael didn't jump into kind of like a, a, a winning car. You know, if, if you think about it, he really yeah. did build the team around him. That's you know? true. Yeah. Or, or whether it was him or Jean Todd or Ross Braun mm -hmm. or Rory Byrne. But I mean, either way, you know, he, he kind of built built that that team around him. And, um, and you know, the Mercedes wasn't, I mean, look, let's face it, 
Michael came back to run the Mercedes and that was a, you know, that was a, that was, that was kind of a nightmare. So, I mean, you know, that car became, you know, what it is. And, and again, I don't know enough to say that it was Lewis that, that did it. It could, you know, I mean, we could sit here and say that it's Toto Wolf, you know, maybe he was the one that did it. Um, yeah. But um, what they've all got is they've got the, they've obviously got the, the natural, natural ability, which, which is, it, which is, you got to have obviously. Any, yeah. Any yeah, yeah. And I think you can apply this to it. I think it's the work ethic. It's that, you know, with all of, all of them, it's it's having that extra work ethic. You know, putting in the, the the work behind the scenes at the track, away from the track, and just constantly just grinding and keeping that motivation. You know, keeping motivated. Yeah. It must be tough. You know, if you're having success, you know, how do you keep keep pushing and keeping? You know, keep pushing right. yourself in the team. Complacency. Um, it's easy to go there. You know, absolutely. I think that's the same in all sports, when, isn't it? When when the whole world is telling you that you're going to win this next race, you know, how do you really go in? You know what I mean? Like you almost yeah. want to just, you know, you yeah. know, not not turn it up to eleven. So, yeah. But I mean, look, you go back to Fangio. I mean, I watched a documentary mm -hmm. on Fangio a few weeks back, and actually, he started really late, and he actually really retired late, pretty young. So you know, you, you look at you know what he achieved, and you think, well, okay, yeah. it's a different era, but you can only you can only judge him on the era that he was driving in. But actually. Right. You know, you could say if he had a longer career, maybe he could have, had, you know, he could have had more wins again. So, you know, maybe it's Fangio. <laughs> right. No, no. It, <laughs> but it, and I, I brought that up actually, you know, in a previous interview where it's like it could be Fangio. It's just, it's yeah. it. Like I said, it's it's just amazing how it's, um, you know, it, it's all about information, right? You know, yeah. what information you've taken in, and, and I think that we've got more information, um, especially for for our generation on. The drivers that you and I are speaking about, but I bet yeah. you yeah. Our, our, our father, grandfather, whatever, I'll be like, oh, Fangio, you guys are out of your minds, you know? Yeah. It's, it's kind of the same thing that, you know, we even say about like, you know, modern Formula One cars, you know, like, oh, you know, the drivers of the past and what it, you know, these guys have it easy. It's on autopilot. Yeah. Exactly. Like, you know, it's a video game, but, um, but yeah, it, it's, you know, and that keeps going and going and going, you know? Exactly. So, exactly. Um, and then now you have to answer the second part. Who did you really like going up against? Who did you? Well, I mean, um, I, I obviously I said before I was I was Juan, uh, Juan Pablo Montoya's teammate, and you know he was he was tough, you know, because we were actually pretty evenly matched throughout the year. But you know, he kind of, one of those guys that was just wicked. And that tough. was in Indy Lights, or what was that? that was in? In, actually in, in British Formula Three. So that's right. That's right. That's right. So, so he'd won the Formula Ren uh, sorry, Formula Vauxhall Championship, and I'd won Formula yes. Ren. We're kind of rival series, and we'd, we'd end up joining the same team, and um, so we were kind of like pitched against ours, uh, against each other, mm -hmm. and we came out pretty much head, you know, pretty much close to each other. But he was just, he was just tough because he just had, I mean, he's quite a lot different to how he is now. He's super skinny, you know, like really cheeky. Loads yeah. and loads and loads of just raw ability. I mean, he didn't have any work ethic at all. He used to eat McDonald's all the time, and yeah. but just, just wickedly fast. So you know, he he was uh, he was super good. I mean, and then obviously not against, but I obviously driven with Tom Christensen. Um, yeah, with Mon victory. You know, a, a driver that I probably, you know, just just an amazing driver, and again, probably one of those drivers that sort of slipped the net of Formula One, which is, you know, it, right. it, unfortunately it happens, doesn't it? But all it's done is a lot. I mean, look at the success that he's had. You know what I mean? No, I, I, yeah. you're right. He would have, I think he would have been mega in F1, but yeah. geez, what he's been able to do in, 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 you know, sports car but, racing. Having said that, Paris, you know, when I was growing up doing karting, Jan Magnussen was by far like, he was like the boy. I mean, he was amazing. And then yeah. he came into Formula Ford, won the festival, Came into Formula Three, won more Formula Three races than anybody, and then just when he went to F1, he just didn't quite have that work ethic or whatever. It just kind of didn't quite happen for him. But if you looked on pure talent, you would say that's the guy. Right. Uh, but um, but he still made a great career in in, in sports car racing, so it's, it still worked out for him in the end. So. Formula One's weird like that. I mean, look at all the guys. I mean, especially guys that you raced against. I mean, like look like Cristiano Dimata, You know. Yeah. I mean, big success. You know, over here in terms of, I mean, what? Because it was both Bordet. Life One Montoya. He did IndyCar and Indy 500. He won both. Yeah. yeah. You know, went over, was with Toyota. I mean, obviously, wasn't the best car, but that team had the biggest budget at the time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but I mean, still just didn't do, you know, a whole lot. Sebastian no. Bourdais, you yeah. know, I mean, yeah. these are guys that, you know, in, 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 you know, very competitive. I mean, you know, it, like you talked about IndyCar, super competitive, not not yeah. a lot of advantage there. Yeah, you know? yeah. I think there's a lot of politics. I mean, 
yeah. a lot of politics anyway in motorsport, but I think in Formula One it's pretty brutal. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't I don't think it's probably quite a nice place to be. I, I don't think it's somewhere that you know is is a is a great place to be. I think it's great for a period, and I think if you're winning, it's great. But I think it's it's they don't call it a Shark Tank for nothing, do they? So yeah, um, yeah. Um, I'm going to ask a question that I've never asked before, but I'm going to ask it because this is going to be fun. Um, and, 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 a, and a client has asked it. I think it's a, so it says, uh, I'm actually going to ask it just how it says. You look fit. What does your diet and workout look like? Um, I just turned 38. I look like I'm fucking double, sorry, excuse me, <laughs> double your age. So what, what, yeah, what are you doing over there? Because you're definitely not having bangers and mash every morning. <laughs> And that uh, horrible British food over there. So, what do you do? You guys have a Whole Foods now? What's going on? No, no, I, no. I, well, I mean, I, so I've, I am forty six in September. So I'm you're forty six in September. Yeah, yeah. We're turning this off. So, this is over. I feel, I feel <laughs> horrible. I know. So yeah. So definitely getting old. But um, you know, I, I've kind of always, I've always kind of trained all my life. You know, because you, you start with the racing and and, and right. you, you know. You, as a kid and you do your bit of training and stuff and I'm training for a food competition by the way yeah. so i'm on my way to <laughs> and, greatness and, um, i don't know i've so i've always trained i mean i can definitely get fat you know i love chocolate i love i love yeah. i love sweet stuff so i have to be really quite disciplined and um but i've always yeah i've always trained I've, i i do i cycle most days mm -hmm. uh, i used to do like sort of 60 70 miles every on, on the bike over over the day and i i run and i do um you know, I do like a lot of circuit training. So actually in lockdown, it's really good because my, my, my trainer, I've been training three days a week with him, but over, mm -hmm. over Skype. So I've, I've got a gym at home, but I put the, the iPad down and he just says, right, this tells me. He just me yells at you? Yeah, but actually it's, it's transformed. Well, he's eating chocolate. He's like, go yeah, exactly. that. Well, he's probably thinking, oh, bring up. this is great because I don't actually need to go to the gym. I can do it from home. But yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, and, and obviously now I'm kind of like back racing again as well. I just, yeah. I just it's just instilled in me, you know, um, I just, I, I feel bad if I don't train. Um, so I just, yeah, try and, try and look after myself as best I can. I, but I do eat a lot of chocolate. And I, whenever, whenever I come to America, I always eat, there's like um, the really like crappy, cheap tw strawberry Twizzlers. You know, the Twizzlers. Like, Mate, those are plastic. I know, I know they are, and I love them. So like the, the trucky. It's America, made of the I same know. stuff that the wrapper that it's encased in. That's the first, first thing I do when I come to America is I usually go to like a, a store and buy some buy some of those i'm just like just like you know just, all right it's well, terrible, look, when you it? come over it's going to be ferrari dinos and twizzlers for you yeah exactly i'm, I'm happy I'm, that, that's all i need that's all i need <laughs> that is that is that is hilarious but um jesus i'm just feeling really bad right now i thought you were 40 i thought you were two years ahead but <laughs> this is just you know ruin my brunch when i get off this call <laughs> um okay uh <laughs> Back to questions that'll make me feel better. Um, no, uh, what what is what is actually um, this is a this is a good one. This is going to make you have to jog your old mind. Um, yeah. What is what is your? Do you have a favorite driving memory? Do you have like a favorite moment? And, and again, it, it's it you know doesn't have to. Oh, I won this race or whatever. It, it could just be just the odds were against you and something happened or something. I don't know. It just what a, a driving memory that 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 um, that just comes. I remember, I remember, I remember, this is really stupid. I remember um, in, in a go-kart race, getting pole position for the world championship final and qualifying. Sorry, not for the final, sorry, pole position for the world championships, senior world championships. And I spent the whole lap singing to myself. Really? And I was like, I kept telling myself off. I kept telling myself saying, God's sake, concentrate, you know, you know, you know and, 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 um, and I ended up crossing the line thinking I'm going to get an absolute bollock in here because I'm going to, I've like completely fluffed it up. And I ended up getting like pole position from, I think it, I don't know, I think it might be from Helio by about three tenths, like one of the best laps I've ever done. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, that was, that was obviously a great feeling. Um, I, what did what, you sing? I have no idea. I can't remember. <laughs> I was, no! No, 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 no. I'm not accepting that. I, no, I would have been I about, I would have been in 16. So that would have been in like about 1930 something. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's probably, I don't know what it would have been. Some probably cheesy pop no, song. No, 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 Come on. Look, if you're embarrassed, <laughs> it's okay. You can share it. You're amongst friends. What, what, uh, honestly, honestly. Was it a Backstreet Boys song? It might well have been. It might well have yeah. been. I, 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 I don't even think Backstreet Boys were How out. do you not know the song? That is, a, that is like such a cool story. I mean, that's a big deal. Like, 
It happens a lot, actually. I, re I remember doing again. Okay, then let's get let's hear a recent song. Then. No, no. What were you not... singing when you won Le Mans? No, no. Well, I definitely wasn't singing there. I was. Absolutely... We are the champions. And I was bricking it. I remember. I remember at Le Mans because they said to me, "Okay, we want you to the final stint. There's two hours to go in the race, and you know you're going around and you like, and literally every time you go past the start finish line, there's a big Rolex clock, and you're looking at and you're thinking." Right, two hours to go, and you do another lap, and you combine. Like you swear, the clock's not moved. It's like it's like stuck. right, right. And and every time you shift in gear, you like mate, you just gotta slow down. You're doing too quick of a lap. Yeah, you right. go slower, and you come back around it, the clock. Every more times every back. gear shift, you're listening, thinking, was that was that that was that a different sort? Was that a different noise? That that shift, you know, you're like thinking. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was that was a pretty petrifying. I mean, that was a great moment by all, you know, obviously, but also scary, you know, because you it, it can only go wrong at that point, can't it? So. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm actually, I, I'm actually now more devastated that you can't tell me the song than than how well, old you are and I'm how fat think, I am. I'm, I'm, trying to think is... about, I'm trying to think about how long. I mean, how long ago that would have been? That would have been like 1991. I mean, Christ, I don't even know what was going on at 1991. So long time. I, good stuff. I mean, oh, well, I'll tell you what, whatever's going on in 1991 is now coming back into into fashion. Yeah, into true, trends, true. But so. it might, it might jog, it might jog my, it might jog my old mind. You know, I might just hear it one day. I'll come back. All right. So my... how about this? Do you, do you, do you enjoy listening to music when you drive? I, I know you can't obviously on the track, but I mean, just yeah. in general, is there, I do. is there yeah, I do. a band? Is there a song that you actually really enjoy if you're going to go into um, the country roads in your uh, agricultural uh, Ford Escort? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, I've, I'm really kind of wa really wide open on my music. So um, I mean, I like, um, I mean, I'm terrible. I mean, I, I, I love like kind of like dance music. But when I when I race in the states, I, I love I love rock music. So I was getting to like Pearl Jam, uh, nice, Hills, all that kind of stuff. And then I was like listening to like country stuff. I found myself listening to country music because we don't really have it over here. I know. And I'm like, and I'm like, I'm sort of feeling a bit guilty that I'm listening to it, but it's like I actually quite enjoyed it. Um, you know it's funny and it's very fitting because um, oh god this made me think of a question that i want to ask you so let me uh, hopefully i don't forget it um because of my old mind um but no it's funny you know most u.s races you know if you think about it with you know sure we have um laguna seca and things like that and, and some some um street courses but for the most part like you know virginia and even even when people think of watkins Glen, you think of new york but you're like no 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 yeah. no it's upstate New York. Like it's like country, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. But you want to listen to country music. Like it look, it's fitting. You're seeing barns and and stuff like that. Um, but um, I'm. I mean, before I oh, go ahead, say it, say it. No, I'm just uh, you're absolutely right because it, you, you tend to listen to your environment. So I, yeah. I, I'd be like, or I've been to like Creedence Clearwater Revival. I get into some like kind of like, you know, like yeah, cool stuff. And I come back to England, and I'd be like, hey, guys, you got to listen to this. And I put it on, and like, they're all like, you know, what are you listening to? They, they didn't do this Dude, it's like New Zealand. You're like, this just came out. And they're like, mate, that's the I remember, I remember coming back. I, I just got, like, a leather jacket from, like, the Hard Rock Cafe. And I yeah. got, like, American music, my shades on. And they're like, I, walk, I, walk, I came back from America, and everyone's, like, looking such at me. Such a tourist. Like, you know, who do you think you are? Yeah. Like, Tom Cruise or something. Yeah, he's such a tourist. Yeah. But, yeah, um, but no, I, I love it, States. I love it. Favorite track in the U.S.? Um, do you know what? You've got so many great tracks in the US. I mean, really, really so many great tracks. I mean, I've always gone well at Laguna Seca, which is, I don't know why, but I've always done well there. I've always qualified well. It seems yeah. to suit my style. I, I don't know why why that is, um, but I love it. Um, I mean, I love, um, how can you not, like, Road America, how can you not love Road America? I mean, I, yeah, I it's funny. It. It's, um, that's a, a, I think for, for most people, you know, because you know, there's a lot of iconic tracks that I think car fans, non-drivers, but car fans, like, you know, they think Laguna and they think Coda and things like that, but it, and maybe even Watkins Glen because of F1 yeah. and all that. But it is funny how the drivers, because you know who also said that was uh, Kenny Brack. Okay. Yeah. 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 And, and so, um, and, and I've always struggled with, with, with road America, but that's also what makes it so great. Um, oh, I mean, yeah. it's, it's a, it, 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 it is a, a mega track. It is, it is. It is everything all kind of combined into one. It's technical in so many ways. It's fast in so you've many got the ways. You've got the carousel. You've got the kink. The I mean, kink. I mean, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and even actually, honestly, the, the one of the corners that actually I struggled with the most was um, coming on to just that that straightaway. That's yeah. a, that is. It is a very non or traditional, you know, corner to come on to that straightaway. You know what I mean? Because it, it, you don't I, you don't see the apex as, as well. You finally arrive at it, you know, you got to use all the road, you know, um, I did, which I did isn't race there. much runoff. 
2000 and I think it was 12, 2012, with, and, and it was a six-hour uh, six race, I think. And, and I actually got, yeah. I was leading. I got passed on the last corner of the last lap by Lucas Law. And he passed me, dived on the inside, and I managed to get undercut him. And actually, we dragged up to the line. And I think I beat him. It was the smallest um, margin victory in the LMS history. Wow. So I think it's on YouTube. But like, he was catching me, catching me, catching me. And I was like, oh, God. And in the last corner of the last lap, he passed me. And I'm like, no. But he kind of overshot. And I managed to yeah. undercut him. Um, but yeah, I mean, you got great. I mean, obviously in, in Canada, Mossport, I mean, Mossport's one of those tracks you go, it's just like, this is like just, just insane, especially in a, yeah. in a big car. Um, but yeah, just, I mean, Long Beach, I mean, I could just real, I mean, I, every single one of them, I could just, you know, I mean, yeah. Done, yeah, I mean, the street tracks are great. Um, Detroit, I mean, they're all good. I mean, they're, they're yeah. good. they've got character, they've got character, they've got bumps. They're imperfect, which is what you want. You want you want yeah. to you from an engineering point of view and also from a driving point of view. Yeah. Um, Sebring, if you like bumps, Sebring. Sebring. Yeah, love it. I mean, in fact, probably my, one of my favorite races of because it used to be the first race of the year for us. We always yeah. had this massive anticipation of getting back racing again. So Sebring has got great memories, and you know, driving around there at night is just crazy with all the people yeah. partying. And stuff. You just how can you not enjoy it? You know, it's just 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 awesome. Yeah. Well, good. You're you're a fan of the U.S. Twizzlers. Yeah, yeah I love you it. Know, <laughs> bumpy racing. Um, so we have actually. Oh wow, we've gone over by six minutes. Okay, I, it didn't feel like it was an hour. Um, can I steal you for? Because I think this answer will probably take thirty seconds. Can I can I ask it? Just because it, yeah. again, it's unlike anything that we kind of asked uh, during this. Because yeah. um, you you brought up the whole Rolex thing. Are are you a timepiece guy? Do you have like a favorite watch or anything like that? Um, don't tell me it's yeah. a Fitbit or some nonsense. No, I don't no, it. no. I, I'm actually wearing a Garmin now, but actually, oh, not, not very, not very sexy. But I, I, I've got um, I've, I'm very I'm, Navy I'm, Seal of you. Yeah, no, I've I've got um, I've got a Rolex, um, like a Daytona with like a kind of like um, like kind of what is it like black and gold kind of dial thing, which is really nice. Yeah, I like that. And I, I've I've got um quite a few Breitlings. Obviously, we've been sponsored. I was going to say, yeah. So so I've had, I've got a, a few of those. I've got you know we've got um a couple when we did Le Mans with with the, the race car on the back, which is kind of cool. Um yeah. stuff. So yeah. So I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, I think you know, car, you know, guys are all the same. You know, cars, watches, it's, just, it's mechanical, and I, I think it's that yeah. whole, it's that it's whole thing. Cool. Of, it's an, it's an appreciation of engineering, you know what I mean? Because each one's a feat. I mean, if you look at a watch, it's very, I, mean, I actually think it's, you know, dead on to like a car in terms of the casing is the body, it's the shape, yeah. you know I mean? There's a watch that you can look at and go, wow, it's really good looking, just like a car. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but then the internals, you know, that, that, that mechanism, the movement is essentially the motor. So, you know, and just like how in a car, you know, it's an ugly car, but somebody can say, yeah, but what's underneath is pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah. Same thing with yeah. watching that. Well, that doesn't appeal to me, but somebody goes, that's a tourbillon and it's this grand complication. And then you can appreciate that. So, yeah, no, there's, yeah. there's definitely, a, yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely appreciate them. I, I, again, I'm I probably with my watches. I'm like my cars. I, I kind of know, I know what I like, but I'm, I'm not like, right, right. Like, but you're not, yeah, yeah it's not a subject that you try yeah. yeah. But I mean, yeah. but it, it's also very so big in the racing world in terms of like sponsorship. I mean, that, actually, that was one of the things that was actually mentioned in this question. You know, I mean, you look at, um, you know, Richard Meal. You know what I mean? Like huge. I mean, he, obviously, it's because he is a, a gearhead and a racing nut. So you know, but you look at, I mean, you know, huge. I mean, he's kind of like surpassed. I think every everyone else in terms of representation in, in, in motorsport. I mean, it's everywhere, but you know, he's, from, a business, he's everywhere. from a business point of view, you know, in, 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 in same with like with, with same with Blancpain, which obviously less well known, but you know, it actually, you know, he's a fan of racing, but actually also his uh, clientele or his, his kind of clients are going to be more, you know, racing car people. That's maybe where Absolutely. he sells. So there is, yeah. a, there is a bit there. So it's not like it's, yeah. he's doing something that's kind of completely left field. So no, no, I mean, exactly. It, it's, it is, um, you're not trying to capture a new demographic. You're trying to speak to your demographic exactly. in a setting. That's also something that they like. It'd be no exactly. different than, you know, advertising on the same TV show that they like, that's kind of tied into that product. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway. So, um, well, look, We've gone over our time. I've had a lot of fun. I hope you have too. Um, sure. You know, I, I thank you for giving us, uh, uh, you know, big big chunk of your Saturday, and no um, and I, you know, I, I hope you're back over here soon. You know, um, I hope so. I'll definitely, I'll definitely be back over. If I'm not racing, I'll be, I'll be over on vacation for sure, and I'll definitely come, come, come over as a tourist. You know, yeah, I'll, I'll come. We'll I'll come. Some and hunt down to yeah, exactly.
you know exactly. so awesome well look guy Thanks, have sir. a great rest of your saturday um Thank keep you. in touch and uh and we'll definitely have you back soon uh, to, to do this again. Great. And thanks for the questions, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday and uh, be well. And we'll see you soon for the next one. See you, guys. Thanks, Ben.